Hello! Today we're going to talk about a subject that I'm really passionate about. Art books. Simply put, an art book is either a book about art or a work of art that is in book form. Today I'm going to show you many examples of different types of art books. When most people think about art books, they think of something like this. Land and Environmental Art by Faden. Faden is a rather large publisher and that kind of plays into what you would expect from like a more, a more common art book. And we'll talk a little bit more about publishers later. But for now, I just want to talk about what makes this book kind of your typical art book. For one, it's very common, and it covers very high-profile artists that are already established in the art canon. It does not cover a single artist, and what it does is it includes beautiful, high-quality photos in a perfect binding, along with text and writings about the work. This kind of book places art into its context, saying this is the history that is happening in the era that it's being made, and what is the influence that work has, has had upon the world. This is the kind of book that you're likely to find at your local Barnes and Nobles, or a normal bookstore that is not art book focused. Another common form of book that you often find are artist books, or monographs. This, for example, all contains the individual work of an artist, and so everything is focused on the artist, but the book itself is not a work of art. So, what happens is this artist is a painter and sculptor, and so it, it profiles about the artist, and then about their work, the periods of work, which, which of what they have done, and then uh, and then also critical essays about their work, if they have them. Now this is a rather large book. The size here is called Quattro. So a book, a book like this um, would not, if you go to a, you may have noticed that this is a rather large book. That's because this size is called Quattro. And so rather large books, if you go, for example, to your local library, will be in a different section than smaller books. So if you are looking, for example, to go to your library or to your bookstore and find large art books like this, you have to go to a, the Quattro section. It is very common to find books like these at galleries with exhibitions. For example, if you buy all of this artist's paintings, you would want to buy their book because then you could place it on your coffee table in your home and the people visiting would be able to go and read and understand the work that you hang on their walls. This is a book about art, so there is no actual art contained with inside of it, but instead the book is put out by the Whitechapel Gallery and the MIT Press talking about what art is and what art should be about. So here we have a collection of essays by artists telling you about their practice and about what art means as a whole. These are excellent books for people who are looking to understand art in a non-specific way. So if you want to understand, for example, what the role of the studio is in the artist's practice, this will allow you to read 50 different artists talk about what a studio means to them and learn from all of these different examples. Next we have something that is not an art book per se, but a culture periodical. For example, we have Brown Book, which is a urban guide to the Middle East where they talk about uh, culture within the Middle East, art, food, music, places, institutions. I want to include this, even though it's not strictly an art book, because it still includes art and talks about it and places art again within its cultural context. These tend to be very affordable and they tend to give you a great glimpse into a particular culture or time or place. So this is my book and this is generally what people talk about when they say the terms art book. Because the book is a work of art itself and the work of art takes book form. This book is just as much a work of art as a painting hanging on the wall or a sculpture in the garden. What makes it so special is that it can be portable, it's cheap, and it's easily distributed, and it can be made in multiples. This is my favorite way to get into art book collecting, and, then you can, and they can become quite valuable over time. Here, we have two books to compare. This book is about art and contains photos of art and writing about art, whereas this book is the art, and the book is the art form. 
It is easy to confuse the two, but it is important to know that there is a big distinction between the two. The last thing I would like to say about this book is that it is a print-on-demand book. This is a new trend that we are starting to see in art books because of the new technology arising. As a whole, people aren't really experimenting with it very much, but I think in the next 20 years, we'll see a lot more. At first, the book seemed not as collectible as previous ones because the editions that they are made in are unlimited. What that means is that you can have an infinite number of books, therefore decreasing the value. However, there are multiple ways that they can hold the value. For example, if the artist signs the book, or if they are made in editions, or if they have a certain time code stamping, or if they are included within some kind of other work of art, the value can still hold strong and they will have a strong resale value. Here, we have a handmade artist book. Notice the spine here. Do you see how this is flat, whereas the other ones are not? This is called a saddle stitch, where the book is folded in half and then stapled together. This book is a series of photographs. So it is both different than the previous book that I had said, which the book is the work of art, and the book of paintings, which is about the paintings. So this book is meant to exist together as a collection, but it is not quite the same thing as a like true book form, where everything, including the stitching and all of that, plays into the meaning of the work, but rather is a collection and organization of a photo series. It exists somewhere in between the two and could exist very well with a gallery exhibition of the work. Here we have a zine. Notice again the saddle stitch. Here this is made with cheaper paper with lower quality prints but are still very very beautiful. They are cheap to make and allow artists to make experimental and exciting work. The last kind of art book I want to share are books that really play with the book form. For example, this book, you can take this strap off here and then the pages will come apart and then you can rearrange them and rearrange the order of the book however you would like. In that way, the book experience changes depending upon how you move it and is unique to you, the reader. There are many, many examples of books that experiment with the book form and utilize the experience of reading into the work of art.